national champion, joins us on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Trevor, welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. I wish it were under different pretenses, yet here we are approaching week number two. Here we are approaching week number two, and you said I'd make the Monday better. I think it would take about 25 Trevors to make this Monday better. <laughs> yeah, it's tough, right? BYU obviously lost and wasn't very competitive against Utah. What were some of your, uh, your reactions to how that game played out? Well, first of all, good for Utah. It is not a stretch to say that Utah has a good chance to sweep the regular season and make the playoff. They're built to compete on a national level, starting from the line of scrimmage out. And if they stay healthy, they'll be really hard for anybody to beat, certainly in the regular season. So they played well. They made plays. BYU helped them with turnovers and penalties at just the exact wrong moment and, and not executing. And so it was a perfect storm in the second half. At the end of, of the first half, I thought there was a good chance BYU could hang on and make some adjustments and win, but then Utah just came out and just hit them in the mouth. And I think you've got to credit Utah. Even though BYU made a lot of mistakes, it was Utah's first game as well. And I think you've got to really give them credit for playing a really good game. What was a bigger storyline in the BYU-Utah game? Turnovers by the Cougars or Zach Moss running for 187 yards against BYU? They were both big stories, but most of those yards came in the second half, and the turnovers were what really set BYU back on their heels. And truthfully, the turnovers you know, didn't need to happen. One was an exchange, a couple of pick sixes. Um, the second pick six certainly wasn't necessary where you had Zach Wilson staring down his receiver. The first one, he was in the grasp, I get it. But I think the, the turnovers were, were the big problem. They led to 20 points for Utah, two pick sixes and a short field touchdown. And that allowed Utah to just double down on the grinding style that they played in the second half. And so I would say that BYU, when they play a team this good, has got to play flawlessly. And not only, not only did they not play flawlessly, they committed multiple massive mistakes that played into the other team's hands. We certainly credit the quarterback when BYU does well, so let's assess his play in a loss. Zach Wilson in the game, 21 of 32, 208, two picks, no touchdowns, had one sack. Uh, did rush the ball pretty effectively for 43 yards. Uh, what did you think of the sophomore quarterback's play Thursday night? I don't know who kidnapped Zach Wilson and put somebody else in his uniform for this game because he didn't look like the Zach Wilson we saw at the end of last season. I think there are a lot of improvements that he can make, a lot of lessons that he can learn. Uh, one of them is don't stare down your receiver. On that second pick six, certainly that's what happened. I mean, he had, he had two receivers on the left. They ran a little combination route where the outside guy went up the field and the inside guy ran a short out. But because Zach was staring at the outside guy running up the field, it allowed the defender that would have covered the, the quick out to fall back and tip that ball up in the air. And I was watching Zach throughout the course of the game, and I played a little game with myself. Okay, if he drops back to pass, does he stare at one guy? Does he stare at the guy he's going to throw to? And more often than not, he absolutely did. And so this is a lesson that he can learn. He's still a young quarterback with a lot of expectations because of what happened last year. And I think that if he gets better from this, then it'll be good. And as a matter of fact, I think it'll, it'll be a positive for the rest of the season and the rest of his career as he looks at this tape and sees things that were absolutely correctable that he did that he can get better at. And I'm talking about things that happened that were him before the Utah defense came into play to disrupt him. And so, you know, he has the talent. He's got the moxie. I think he's got a lot of Tua in him from a standpoint of his attitude and his mentality. And I think those things can be very good. But the technical craft of quarterbacking, he, he needs to get better, and he will. Trevor Maddich of ESPN with us on BYU Sports Nation. I'm always interested in the BYU beat themselves versus the Utah-dominated BYU conversation. Not surprisingly, fan bases typically take to one side. And I, I feel like Utah beat BYU, but the Cougars kind of took the bat and handed it back to Utah and said, okay, keep, keep going. Where do you stand in that conversation, Trevor? 
That's the right way to think about it. I mean, it's disrespectful to Utah to say that BYU would have won the game had they not made certain mistakes. Well, yeah, but Utah had something to do with those mistakes as well. For example, we talked about that second pick six from Zach Wilson. Well, when he was staring down that receiver, the defensive back did a fantastic job of reading it and did the right thing in order to make the play. That was Tariq Lewis who fell back and tipped that ball up in the air for Utah. And so you could say that, yeah, that was a mistake by BYU, but really it was Utah capitalizing on that mistake with really smart recognition and then response to that mistake. At the same time, you're right that BYU did have him the bat at times because you've got to look at bad plays from two different perspectives. One perspective is there's a bad play because the other team made you make the bad play. Then there's the bad plays that you made before the other team had a chance to force the bad play. Yeah. And there were enough of those in this game that BYU can look at it and say, you know, we may have gotten beat by a better team, but we still had a chance to win but for our own misfortune. You live in Nashville. You're in Tennessee. Uh, we've talked a lot about this game. We went to Nashville in the uh, Fan Fest, which was fun, and hung out with you. Now Tennessee and BYU is this week, and Tennessee lost to Georgia State. First off, that was, that was crazy, and uh, probably this could be a great or terrible situation for BYU. I'm not sure which one it is yet. Right. Well, both teams are, are deep down in the dumps. I mean, BYU lost and eventually just got smothered by their rival, and that, that is just nothing worse in football than that. But then Tennessee had a historic loss. I mean, people that have been around this program forever, historians of the Tennessee program are saying that this may be the worst loss in Tennessee history. Mm. A Georgia State team that won two games last year didn't just get lucky. And it wasn't just that Tennessee made some mistakes and had some balls tipped in the air and bounced the wrong way and all those things. No, they outgained, uh, excuse me, they had more first downs than Tennessee. And they, Georgia State, rushed the ball over 50 times. Now, they threw it over 20 times, but they rushed it over 50 times. They pushed around Tennessee at the line of scrimmage. It was ugly for the Volunteers, and they were booed lustily by their home crowd. Well, you know that they're, they're going to hear it in practice because Jeremy Pruitt, their head coach, was the defensive coordinator for Nick Saban. And hell hath no fury like <laughs> Nick Saban at practice the week after an ugly loss. Doesn't happen much, but my goodness, and you know that Pruitt is bringing that same attitude to Tennessee's week this week. And so you'll see the best the volunteers have to offer. But I tell you, they right now have got to be shaken to the core of having been physically dominated by Georgia State. The Volunteers fan base is one of the most passionate in all of college football, and rightfully so. They have national championship history in the late 90s. It's where Peyton Manning went to school, and this was the year. We kept hearing, this is the year that Tennessee turns things around, and they win seven or eight games, and they get on the right track. Well, they lose to Georgia State. So, Trevor, what kind of a team do you expect to show up when they're battling a bunch of angry fans and all of that negativity surrounding the program right now? Well, they'll stay with their process. I mean, again, the, the Nick Saban coaching tree, the process. In other words, what do I do next? And the preparation I expect to be very good, and I expect them to come out and give BYU the very best they have to give. This is a team that's got some holes on the roster. They have some depth issues, especially on the defensive line, and they've got some very young guys playing. They've got a couple of freshmen that will probably start at right tackle and left tackle for, for Tennessee against BYU. So you're looking at a team that, that is – it's got a roster that's got certain terrific capabilities. Ty Chandler, their running back, is one of the fastest running backs in the nation. I mean, he's really capable. But they've also got some places that BYU ought to be able to exploit. And so, you know, I expect this Tennessee team, whatever they do this week, it'll be the best they can possibly do. Who's more desperate for a win, BYU or Tennessee? I think they're both desperate for a win. I think that Tennessee has all the pressure because they're playing at home the week after losing to Georgia State. Tennessee fans will look at the box score of BYU-Utah and think that BYU is not very good, which is not true. BYU is a very good football team with, I think, a lot of potential that kind of is smothered by this cloud of awful after losing to Utah the way they did. But the ESPN has a uh, 
a metric called FPI, Football Power Index, that is predictive of what might happen in a matchup. And they give BYU, according to the FPI, a 27% chance to win this game. It's 73% chance for Tennessee to win wow. this game. So the pressure is all going to be on Tennessee at home as a heavy FPI favorite, even though the, the line favors BYU. That's, that's a different concept. I think that the pressure is there. So who needs it more? I would say Tennessee, if they lose this game, will be in a much worse position than BYU be, will be if they lose this game. Although, really, if BYU loses this, looking at USC and Washington coming up, there'll be a lot of dreariness in Provo. Does the Utah game affect how you uh, look at the season for BYU in terms of what is possible with wins and losses? Is it, is it too early after one game to know? It is too early. And actually, if anything, I'm encouraged. I'm encouraged because the mistakes that BYU made that turned the game were correctable mistakes. They have the talent to make those corrections. Zach Wilson, I still believe in, uh, even though he threw those two pick sixes, even though he could play better than he did in this game, I believe he's got the ability to be what everybody hoped he would be coming into this season. So I'm encouraged by that. The BYU offensive line is still one of the better offensive lines in the nation. And this is a, a team that we can't get down on because of that one game. Now, they have a, a ridiculously tough test coming up with the way the schedule shakes out over the next few weeks. But the lessons learned and how they're applied is what will matter. And I think one of those lessons is Tyson Williams. He did a great job when he got the ball in his hands, but he only had seven carries and one catch. And I think that BYU will, will learn some of those lessons and see what they really have with that guy and get him involved earlier and with more frequency in what they're doing offensively. And I would like them especially to throw the ball more to him and the other running backs. Trevor, BYU fans hoping there is a new hope in SEC country. We appreciate the insight and the look back uh, at game number one and as uh, we're very excited about game number two. Thanks. Yeah, you know, and I feel terrible this week as a BYU guy because of what happened in the opener. All I can say is Find someone you love, hug them, and look to the future. <laughs> That's great and the advice. Future is Tennessee. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Trevor. Trevor Maddich on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret.